how to test for partial discharges. Well, partial discharges create heat, they create light, they create sound, they create ele electromagnetic signal, which is very important for us because this is what we usually measure, and they usually cause some kind of a chemical reaction. This is usually triggered by the heat. So let's talk about the light first. Technically, you could see partial discharges because they emit light. However, in broad daylight, very often this is kind of difficult. But if you are close to sunset or sunrise, or you're in a room where you can dim the light, you can see partial discharges, external ones at least. They have a certain bluish glow and they are called corona. Furthermore, very often this is accompanied by um, an acoustical noise. It's sort of a hissing sound and you can hear that as well. The acoustical signal actually gives us the opportunity to localize them sometimes. So there, are, first of all, there are certain microphones out there that are pretty directional, and you have, you know, have uh, headphones on, and then you can try to figure out where this is coming from if you can't see them. But furthermore, if a partial discharge happens inside, for example, an oil filled transformers, these acoustic signals can help us to localize that as well. So there are devices out there where you put a couple of sensors, microphones, on the outside of an oil filled transformer and whenever there's a partial discharge, it creates a certain noise. And this noise could be captured, it's not very easy, but it could be captured up by, uh, uh, by the microphones and then you can have an idea where about the noise source inside the transformer is and if there's partial discharge, you just localized it. Partial discharges also create heat, so sometimes it's even possible to detect them by using an infrared camera and if you're outside, going on your high voltage devices and actually realizing, oh, there's something much hotter than the other one. Example given, you're on a transformer or on a, on a three-phase cable system and you're having three end terminations or you're having three bushings and then you're looking with your camera there and you're seeing one of them is much hotter than the other. It could be numerous things, but it could also be partial discharges. So that's a very good idea to perform a partial discharge measurement at this point in time to figure out what it is. Partial discharges also cause chemical reactions. In a solid insulation system, we usually can't do much about it, but in a liquid insulation system, we can sometimes detect them. So example given, you're having a big oil filled transformer and you're doing something which is called a dissolved gas analysis, meaning you take a little bit of the oil send it to a laboratory and ask them what kind of chemical reaction has been happened or what kind of gases are dissolved in my liquid, in my oil. They can figure out what is in there and based on this you can sometimes find out if partial discharge is happening inside a transformer or not. So let's imagine there are partial discharges in your transformer, in your cable, in your rotating machine or whatever. What can you do? Well, you can measure them. And for measuring them, we're usually using the electromagnetic signal, very often the electric signal, and because every partial discharge creates a pulse, and our idea is to connect to the outside of our device under test, our high voltage device, and then by means that make a lot of sense, hopefully, find every single pulse that is generated inside my electrical device, measure it, qualify it, quantify it, and then derive proper actions out of that. And in our next video, we're going to talk about what a PD pulse is. Thank you very much for watching, and maybe you can leave me a like. Thanks.